adaptation of one of British literature's most tragic and compelling figures, Shakespeare's Macbeth. It's a play that has got it all, ambition and fate and deception, treachery, madness, murder and black magic. And I should know because they forced me to be Macbeth in the school play, aged 11. What do you think about that, ladies and gentlemen? Um, I'm joined by Ian Brown, who is an actor and a local Macbeth expert and enthusiast. And if you can, Ian, just remind ourselves of the story. Well, the story is of Macbeth and Banquo, Scottish generals, are heading home after crushing a rebellion against Duncan, King of Scotland. They meet three Scots witches who hail, hail them, hail Macbeth, the end of Browns, hail Macbeth, the end of Corder, and King of Dubin. Macbeth sends a letter to his wife that Duncan, the king, is coming to spend the night. Lady Macbeth decides to claim his right to kill Duncan. Together, they murder him, blaming the servants. Malcolm and Macduff suspect Macbeth and flee. Macbeth kills Banquo and Lady Macduff and children. Macbeth returns, Macbeth frightened the returns to the witches who tell him that no man born of woman can kill him. And then Malcolm, son of Duncan and Macduff, head north to Burnham Wood and Dunstan to assassinate Macbeth. And Macduff, unfortunately, was torn from his mother's womb. Consequently, no man born of woman kills Macbeth. Or born by Caesarean, so that's how the prophecy came true. Yes. That's and then right. the thing about the woods moving, they did move because he was using them as camouflage. They were using them as camouflage. Yes. And do you enjoy playing Macbeth? Have you done Macbeth? I, I like it, very likely I've done Macbeth. Okay. I, I actually only have a good report of Macbeth. The point, which is the funny it's part. It's, 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 <laughs> yes, and Samuel Taylor Coleridge said there was no comedy. The great English essayist Samuel Taylor Coleridge said Shakespeare has no comedy and no punning in Macbeth, his book. Okay. So, Mr. Coleridge, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a great summary of the play, yes. Macbeth? Everyone's impressed. Yay! 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 And he, he has to put out a candle. I wanted to blow it, but the headmaster said, you've got to put your hand on the candle. It's an 11-year-old boy. And I was scared, and I kept doing it, and I got it right. And in the end, you know, my hand sort of calloused over, and it was like, well, do you, what is that scene about? Out, out, breathe candle. Is that about... What, go on, tell me. You're wrong. What do you saying there is? That, um, <laughs> <laughs> the scene is that it's my wife has died. The kind of life is a big span of time. So if you, if you look at the beginning of it, it she should have died here after. He's really saying later, and I still love her now. And tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, what he's really saying there in, 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 in present day language, this repetition captures the monotony of life. So if you if you look at this small brief, it's, it's all about life. And he ends up by and moving an upwards. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struck and breaks his hour upon the stage. It's a stage metaphor, as in as you like it. But here, comparing the poor player when finished speaking, his life on the stage is over, and, and his performance, uh, the shortness of life. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. There's so many famous lines in it, hasn't it? Yes, there has. And it is, the, the, the last line there is a cynical view of life. But the death is moved by his wife, death. His driving force has left him, and he is, he is, he is devastated. Let us listen to some of these famous lines. We're going to take them from Shakespeare, from Macbeth, in the famous Tomorrow Soliloquy, which Ian has mentioned, and let us just hear the end of it now. <laughs> 